eyes that look alive, an original hand-painted face, porcelain dolls take us back to an era long ago. They didn't start out as a plaything. Maureen Lampert has a passion for dolls and knows a lot about their history and origin. What they started out is the fashion designers in Paris. They would make their costume on a doll used to be between 16 and 20 inches. And then they would be shipped out all over the world, usually India, England, America. And the ladies would order their clothing by this doll. And then after it was purchased, what did they do with the doll? Gave it to their daughters to play with. It was after that time in the 1800s to 1850s that the doll industry began. Maureen's love for dolls started when she was just a child. My mom used to always buy a doll for Christmas. She made all the clothes for it, and my dad made all the furniture. Most of the dolls Maureen received as a child were compositions made up of a wood chip type material and glue. They came after the era of porcelain dolls that stopped being made in the early 1900s. Because of the war, it stopped because the, all the doll factories were made into munition factories. But after the war, they started up again. And then you get into the compositions and the celluloids. And plastics were mainly invented in World War II. So then the toys started to be made with plastics. Marine combined her passion for dolls, a talent for china painting and costume making, all into one hobby when she started making her own porcelain dolls. They put everything I love to do in one, one piece. So it just grew and grew and grew and I started competing and I started winning and winning internationally. So you make a name for yourself or a reputation. So I started getting orders for these really elaborate French dolls. It wasn't long after that that she was asked to teach for the Doll Artisans Guild in New York. When she's not traveling around doing seminars, she's teaching classes out of her home in a new spay. It's an art form she feels is important for her to pass on. In this day and age, um, one, the, the painting that is done on the, on the doll is called China painting, and that's a lost art. And the type of sewing I teach them is also a lost art. And because I know how to do it, it's something I, I, I like to share. Whether it's teaching students, restoring an old family keepsake, or creating for a competition, Maureen is always striving for perfection in every detail. Not just making the costume, but making the shoes, the socks, the wigs out of goat mohair. Um, the only thing I bought was eyes or eyelashes. Extensive research is done during the creation, right down to using the right fabric. Some of these dolls are highly valuable. I know of one doll, it, its auction um, um, amount was about $120,000 for one doll. Usually uh, a really, really good French doll is, is around $30,000 for a brew, for a jumeau. It is between eight and 10, maybe 20. But because they're getting harder and harder to find, the price goes up and up and up. Maureen has lots to share about the history of dolls and how they differed in various eras and locations where they were produced. She says it's just a lot of fun keeping the art alive. In the news, I'm Kelly Robinson.